Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Here we go. Week four. And you know, guys, I will say this. There are not that many marquee matchups heading into this weekend, but for many teams and for all of the games up here on our big board, the tone will be set for the rest of the season. For many teams, what happens in week four will set the tone, will set the course for the rest of this season. And that is certainly going to be the case for every team up here in our top five games of the week. And we are here to break down everything you need to know for these five games and get you ready for this upcoming weekend of college football. So once again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, Check out everything down in the description below. Primarily, mainly, go to our website, thegridironexpert.com, and check out those expert picks. Our week four expert picks for both college and NFL will be coming out on Wednesday. So if you're not signed up for those, you need to make sure you do that now so you don't miss out on any of our extra analysis, any of our extra coverage, some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the country, consistently beating out over 80% of the national analysts. It's an offer, an opportunity, that you do not want to miss. Help us help you. Go sign up for that again down in the description below on our website, thegridironexpert.com. So let's get started, guys. Let's talk about these week four matchups. Again, there's not many marquee ones. There's only two ranked versus ranked matchups, and ironically, both of them come at neutral sites. We have Notre Dame in Wisconsin, number 12 and number 18. We have Texas A&M in Arkansas, number 7 and number 16. Those are the only two rain versus rain matchups, guys. And again, for every game up here, for every team up here, what happens in these games will set the tone and set the course for the remainder of the season. Some have major national implications. Some have major just conference implications, uh, or maybe both. And again, we're here to break down everything you need to know. Our two games of the week, of course, are going to be the two ranked versus ranked matchups, so we're not going to predict a winner for those today. The prediction for Texas A&M and Arkansas will come out on Wednesday. The prediction for Notre Dame-Wisconsin will come out on Thursday. So we're going to break them down briefly, but the winners, projected winners, will come out in those videos on Wednesday and Thursday, so make sure you do not miss out on those. But let's start for the game in Chicago. Let's start. Number 12, Notre Dame. Number 18, Wisconsin. Uh, a matchup where these two teams have not met since 1964. They have not met since 1964. Uh, and this game is huge for so many reasons. One of them, for me, is this is a playoff elimination game, if you can even call it that. Uh, the loser of this game, I do not believe, has even a remote chance at making the college football playoff. And you might say, they don't have them anyways. It's not true. Obviously, if Notre Dame were to run the table, go undefeated, uh, they would make the college football playoff, should make the playoff. Wisconsin, yes, they have a loss on their record already, but to a good Penn State team. If the Badgers were able to run the table with a win over Notre Dame, a win over Iowa, uh, and then obviously a win in the Big Ten Championship against whoever it is out of the East, Wisconsin can make a case for the playoff. But if they lose this game, they don't stand a chance. And the same could be said for Notre Dame. As an independent, they might need to go undefeated, especially with the rest of the country and many other contenders looking pretty solid. But you look at this game, guys, outside of that playoff elimination storyline, the bigger one might be that's the Jack Cohn reunion game. Jack Cohn, the former quarterback at Wisconsin, is now the quarterback at Notre Dame. And so far this year, he has thrown for 828 yards, eight touchdowns to just two interceptions. I would say in the three games that Cohn has played in South Bend, uh, he has looked better than he ever did during his time with the Badgers. He looks like a brand new man, a brand new quarterback, uh, and he gives the Fighting Irish a legitimate chance to win this game. Uh, but for me, this is more of a battle between Notre Dame's offense and Wisconsin's defense. Uh, I, I wholeheartedly believe that Wisconsin owns the defensive edge in this game, uh, but I also wholeheartedly believe that Notre Dame owns the offensive edge in this game. So can Wisconsin's offense under Graham Mertz, who has struggled this year, can they find any success uh, against Notre Dame? Can they find any success against a Notre Dame defense that's allowing 381 yards per game that has been exploited by Florida State, Toledo, and Purdue? Not necessarily the best of the best here. Uh, Wisconsin factor in the Badgers are also coming off a bye week coming into this game in Chicago. This is a game that from the beginning, since back in June and July, we said would be physical, would be a game that we believe will be won in the trenches. And again, we'll have a projected winner for this game on Thursday, but the college game day is in Chicago for a reason. It's going to be a top game. I expect it to be a low-scoring game. Not many points scored because I do believe it's a battle one in the trenches. I believe it's a defensive slugfest, uh, but we are going to be in for a fun one in Chicago on Saturday afternoon. Move over to the SEC. 
Number 7, Texas A&M takes on number 16, Arkansas and Arlington at Jerry's World, Cowboys Stadium. This is a game that we never anticipated to have up here on the big board. This was a game that no one, I can guarantee you, thought would be nearly a top 15 matchup uh, in week four. Uh, you know, many, many thought Arkansas might be 3-0. and We know we did, but no one thought Arkansas would be playing as well as they have so far this year. Big win over Texas, 40-21. to Big win over Georgia Southern. And obviously Texas A&M, many had pegged as a playoff contender. This game is huge for so many different reasons. Uh, but you look at the history, guys. History is on the Aggies' side. Texas A&M has won nine straight games over the Razorbacks. They have not lost to Arkansas since joining the SEC. But if you have followed this series, the Southwest Classic, you know that Arkansas always plays Texas A&M tough. Even in the bad years under Brett Bielema, even under the really bad years under Chad Morris, Arkansas always gave A&M a run for their money. Five of the last seven games between Arkansas and Texas A&M have been decided by seven points or less. Three of those were decided in overtime. Yes, all Aggie victories, but there were many years where A&M was a heavy, heavy double-digit favorite, and Arkansas nearly put off the upset. This is really a game, guys, where you have to question, how will Texas A&M's new quarterback, Zach Calzada, do against Arkansas's very surprising defense? A defense that's giving up just 142 passing yards per game. A defense that's giving up just 266.3 total yards per game. Calzada, obviously in for the injured Haynes King, led the game-winning drive against Colorado two weeks ago, torched New Mexico last week for 275 yards and three touchdowns. And again, we'll touch more on this on Wednesday, deeper analysis for Arkansas and A&M. Uh, but this is a battle where if he can exploit this Arkansas defense, uh, A&M should get their 10th straight win over the Razorbacks. But Arkansas has been very surprising on that side of the ball. They've been more surprising offensively, putting up 633 yards against Georgia Southern, putting up 471 yards against Texas, over 300 of those coming on the ground. The Razorbacks, you could make a case to say, hey, Arkansas owns the offensive edge in this game. Possibly. Defensively, might be in the middle. Could give the edge to the Aggies, who have been fantastic against the pass, mediocre against the run. I will tell you this. We're not projecting a winner today, but you can expect another one-possession game between the Aggies and the Razorbacks. Arkansas will not go down without a fight, and we should be in for another classic down in Arlington. Now we get into the real predictions here. We're actually going to choose winners for these final three games. And again, it was tough to find three other games to put up here on the board after you know only having two ranked versus ranked matchups. But one of these that really caught my eye was number nine, Clemson, in North Carolina State. Uh, you know, we said this was a trap game for Clemson back in the preseason. Uh, it is now more than ever after watching Clemson these last few weeks. The uh, struggle and the loss to Georgia could not get any offense going. Struggled mightily last week to Georgia Tech, needing a goal line stand to take down the Yellow Jackets 14-8. to uh, Clemson's only a 10-point favorite going into this game. Uh, that's, that's new territory for the Tigers. Rarely are they uh, barely double-digit favorites in an ACC matchup, let alone against one that's not even ranked. Uh, but the Wolfpack are for real. The Wolfpack are for real, and they have the talent, the speed, and home field advantage on their side to exploit Clemson and to upset Clemson. It all comes down to the Tigers' offense. Can they generate something? They've averaged just 22 points per game this year, just 322.7 total yards per game. DJ Uyunglele has not looked good at all, and NC State offensively is over here averaging 455 yards of offense per game. They're looking good. And we've seen NC State give Clemson tons of fights before, tons of major tests before. Uh, so I'm not going to be surprised at all to see a similar situation on Saturday afternoon. But the major reason we are picking Clemson here, yes, we are picking the Tigers in this game, is for two reasons, but the main one is what Clemson lacks in offense they make up for on defense. They still have one of the better defenses in the country. It should be noted that in three games, Clemson has not allowed an offensive touchdown. The touchdown when they played Georgia came off a of pick six. They did not allow a touchdown against South Carolina State. They did not allow a touchdown to Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets got two field goals and a safety. They have not allowed an offensive touchdown all year long. And they're allowing just 266.7 total yards per game. NC State has the offense to exploit that. Devin Leary has played well. Zonovan Knight has played extremely well at running back. 
but I still believe that Clemson owns that big defensive edge, and I believe that DJ Uyungle finally finds his groove, finally settles in as quarterback for the Tigers. I'm not saying he has a monster day, but does just enough. Clemson gets by. It is close. They do not blow out the Wolfpack. It is close, but Clemson wins. They kind of prove some doubters wrong. They remain in the top 10 and finally start to work their way back up in the rankings after many people have already written them off this season. We got two Big 12 games left in our big uh, in our predictions for the week. Uh, we got number 14, Iowa State at Baylor. Similar to NC State and Clemson, this to me spells trap game for Iowa State. Uh, this spells major trap game and do not be surprised at all if Baylor pulls off this upset. As you can see, we don't think the Bears will. But I would not be surprised in the slightest. Three of the last five games between Baylor and Iowa State have been decided by one possession. That includes a 38-31 victory last year for Iowa State. Baylor wasn't all that last year. Baylor is obviously much improved than they were from 2020. And the Bears nearly took down Iowa State, a game where they led 24-10 in the third quarter, a game where they forced four Iowa State turnovers but were unable to get the victory over the Cyclones. They were outscored 28-10 in the second half. I'm not ruling out a similar game here, a similar one-possession game here between the Bears and Iowa State. Baylor has thrived offensively this year, especially on the ground, averaging 323.7 rushing yards per game. The Bears had 307 rushing yards last week against Kansas. Jerry Bohannon, at quarterback, has thrived over 650 passing yards, five touchdowns, zero interceptions. This Baylor offense was their, their, their cancer last year. The Baylor offense held them back last year. They've taken a major step forward. Dave Aranda is one of the better uh, defensive minds in all of college football. That has looked very solid this year for the Bears. Yes, granted, they have not really been tested. They really have not been tested. Texas State, Texas Southern, uh, and then obviously Kansas. This is their first true test. But at home, with the way we've seen Baylor play, with the way we've seen Iowa State play, a pitiful performance against Iowa, uh, I really think the Bears can give them a run for their money. The reason we are picking the Cyclones here is their rushing defense. I believe Iowa State can hold Baylor in check, keep them in check on the ground, and force Jerry Bohannon to try to win this game through the air. Something that he is capable of doing, but something that he won't do. The Cyclones are allowing just 49.3 rushing yards per game. Yes, they got blown out against Iowa, but had Brock Purdy taken care of the ball, had they not committed too many turnovers, they easily could have won that game. I believe, unlike last year, unlike they did against Iowa, the Cyclones take care of the football in what I believe can be a one-possession game. I believe Iowa State's offensive balance and strong rushing defense gets the job done on the road. They narrowly get by Baylor, but they keep their Big 12 title hopes and possibly college football playoff hopes alive with a win in Waco. And our final matchup here, guys, remains in the Big 12. It could be, you know, many people think, think it should be West Virginia, Oklahoma, or maybe another game up here. I like this one a little bit better. Kansas State cracking the top 25, going to Oklahoma State, just like Arkansas A&M, just like Iowa State and Baylor, uh, just like so many of these games up here. This series has been so, so close. Four of the last six between the Wildcats and the Cowboys decided by one possession. And that includes Oklahoma State's 20-18 victory just last year. Uh, and for me, guys, this is huge for the Big 12 standings. Both teams are 3-0, so the winner obviously improves to 4-0. And the winner of this game will solidify themselves as a top three uh, candidate and contender in the Big 12, can contend for that Big 12 title. A loss obviously doesn't put them out, uh, but a win solidifies them up towards the top of those standings where they can start competing uh, with Oklahoma, maybe even Iowa State, for a spot in that championship game. Kansas State, they already have big wins over Stanford, who upset USC later on. Stanford and Nevada, both those coming by double digits. They scored 21 unanswered points in the fourth quarter to take down the Wolfpack just last week. And they did that with a backup quarterback in Will Howard, who was filling in for the injured Skylar Thompson. Oklahoma State, meanwhile, they've taken a while to find their groove. They know how to win the close games. Narrowly escaping Missouri State, narrowly escaping Tulsa, and last week going on the road to take down a good Boise State team on the Smurf turf, 21 to 20. This is a game, guys, where quarterback play is, you know, going to be crucial here because quarterback play from Spencer Sanders and from Will Howard is mediocre at best. So obviously, this is a game where I think the run game dominates. Deuce Vaughn for Kansas State, I believe, is one of the better backs in the entire Big 12. 
He's putting up solid numbers this year, 371 yards and five touchdowns. You have Jalen Warren for Oklahoma State just last week, racked up 218 yards and two touchdowns against the Broncos, again, in Boise. So these are two running backs that are going to go at it, and I think both teams are going to hand off as much as they can to these guys. But at the end of the day, if it's another one-possession game, which quarterback has the guts, which quarterback has what it takes to march their team down the field and put them in a position to win? For me, that's Spencer Sanders for Oklahoma State. He's a guy who is more mobile than Will Howard. He's going to have the home crowd on his side. I believe home field advantage plays a huge role, not just for this game, but for many games across the country this year. We've already seen it so many times through three weeks already. But Oklahoma State, I believe, owns that quarterback edge. Spencer Sanders' dual threat ability gives him that extra edge and element over Will Howard. And I believe the Cowboys squeak by Kansas State They will swap spots. Kansas State will drop out of the rankings. The Cowboys will move into the rankings. And the Big 12 is going to be very, very wild going into Week 5 and obviously going into the bulk of conference play. But I do believe the Cowboys get the win, but it will be close. So there you have it, guys. Your top five games of Week 4. Again, not the most exciting week, we say. Of course, Week 4 is going to be filled with tons of surprises. Those first two, those are your games of the week. Again, Arkansas a m coming out on Wednesday. Notre Dame-Wisconsin coming out on Thursday. We'll have deeper analysis and projected winners for both of those. But get ready, guys. We've said it time and time again. Week 2 might not be exciting. Week 3 might, be, might not be exciting. And they were. They exceeded our expectations. Week 4 is going to do the exact same. So buckle up. College football is in full force. It's going to be a weekend you do not want to miss. And you're especially not going to want to miss these top 5 games. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Check out everything down in the description below as well. Go sign up for those expert picks. Help us help you. Some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the country. All you've got to do is just go sign up today. Analysis comes out every Wednesday over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Make sure to go check it out. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.